Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is a comedy sword fighting stuntman known as the corporate action hero, John Davis. And we're going to talk with him about what it's like to play for a living. You can find him at corporateactionhero.com. You can find Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. That's a community of all about reminding adults to play, to have fun, to enjoy your life. If you want to be part of a community like that, check out playfulhumans.com. There's even a quiz to see how playful and what types of play that you will enjoy. Playfulhumans.com. Here we go. Nice moves, John. I like it. Thanks for getting into it. Oh, no. You you play music. I got to play, baby. (laughs) (laughs) That is awesome. Well, we like to start with the joke of the week here. So the joke of the week is brought to you by the dictionary. There is only one word spelled wrong in the dictionary, uh, and that is wrong, uh, of course. Uh, (laughs) W-R-O-N-G. But here's your joke of the week brought to you by the dictionary. Why is you the wealthiest vowel in the alphabet? Hmm. A I and E O U. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, there you go. Nice. Do you have any uh, any jokes or stories to start us off? With? I I got a story for you. Years ago, I was working at Renaissance festivals and I was sharing a stage with a magician and I was doing my comedy sword fighting show and he was doing his his show and we were sharing a stage between I was a 45 minute show then he would do a 40 minute minute show and back and forth all day long. Well, my comedy partner thought was trying to work out a new joke backstage, and he was back there. And for the for the joke, he needed for the for the joke, he needed. Well, let's see, the sound of gas passing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he needed a fart noise, right? So yeah. he's backstage and he's going <laughs> and <laughs> and he's finding all these different ways to make these fart noises. And <laughs> suddenly, out of the blue. The door from the stage kicks open, and this guy comes in wearing a straight jacket, and he says, please cut it out. (laughs) (laughs) My partner's mic was on by accident. (laughs) And and he was on stage going, (laughs) in a a straight jacket. It was the greatest story ever. And I still tell that story today because, to me, that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. I think it makes the show. You know, that's what, that, that's what the escape artist needs is a Foley, uh, Foley right. artist behind them. Exactly. The exactly. <laughs> that's a great story. Well, we can tell already that you are a very playful human, that you do things like uh, play with swords and whips and uh, gun spinning and all kinds of, of stunts. How did you get into that? Did you ever have a real job? And and how did one become a comedy sword fighting stuntman? Well, that that's a that's a great question. Did I ever have a real job? I'm one of the the few people in the world who literally have been able to work, uh, you know, less than well, usually averaging about three days a week for yeah. most of my for most of my life. But I did I, I did the. the um, I used to be a landscaper and all kinds of things. Got my degree in architecture. Never did any of it. Never did anything with that with that degree. Good for you. Uh, um, and what happened was I got drugged to a Renaissance festival, and uh, I found a passion for for doing stage combat. And I met these two guys who were who were two of the top fight directors in the country. And I got really into doing that kind of work and stunt work and all kinds of crazy things like that. So next thing you know, I put together a, a show called Hack and Slash, and we went all over the world with that that show. That show actually it got so popular that the USO came to a show we were doing and asked us to do USO shows. And we, we actually did wow. six USO tours all the way out to the front lines of Iraq and Afghanistan, starting from 2001 to 2006. Wow. That's awesome. That's gotta be amazing. Uh, gratifying work. Did you do a lot of Renfest? We have a pretty good Renfest here in Kansas city. I don't know if you've ever, uh, I've never been to Kansas city. I know people who do that festival, but I did, uh, I mainly up and down the East coast in Maryland, Tennessee, Georgia, f- two Florida's, uh, and I directed the Flor- two of the Florida's and Tennessee and one in Ohio as well. I was the artistic director of them. Um, but so I did Renaissance festivals for a long time. It was very well known doing that. 
Well, and now you're the corporate action hero. So you decided to actually make some real money and get into the corporate <laughs> training uh, gig, which is great. <laughs> Absolutely, because you know that's they, they're the ones who have the money, so why not go take it, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny because I, I I had you know I had a traumatic experience early in my life that, that told me what I could achieve, and and after that experience, I went on and I decided that I needed to help people achieve their own goals. And so what was happening is I would go on stage and I'd be joking and having a great time doing all that stuff, and then I'd step off stage and for the next two hours I'd be sitting in the audience helping people achieve their goals. And I said, well, I got to find a way to marry this new passion of helping people and the cool stuff like whips and nunchucks and beds of nails and crazy things like that that I love doing. How do you marry that? So you put it together as a corporate action hero. And so now I go into corporations and I still do whips and nunchucks and all kinds of crazy things. Actually, mm -hmm. one of the coolest one of the coolest things I do is the final thing I do in one of my main corporate speeches is I choose the most timid person I can find in my audience. I bring them on stage and in under five minutes time, I train them to crack a whip and take targets out of my hand. Oh, nice. That's yeah. good. I, I've heard that's not easy, but that's impressive if you can, you can teach them how to, to do that that fast. And that's gotta be fun. Right? Oh, totally fun. And, and what, it's empowering for them, you know, it, for, for them, because they are obviously a timid person. It's life changing because in five minutes time, they became an action hero in front of their entire, all of their peers. You know? Oh yeah, that's sweet. And I did some vaudeville stuff like in high school. Oh, I got into juggling and, and other things. Uh, yeah. um, almost was able to ride a unicycle and, and things like that. But <laughs> um, but I found that those kind of skills are really cool too. That even if you just learn to crack a whip in five minutes, that's something awesome that you can bust out at a party for the rest of your life. Like you have yeah, a, yeah. And you know, a you good know, story one of the cool and skill set, right? One of the coolest things about doing Renaissance festivals was vaudeville went on to Renaissance festivals. So like all those old skills are still alive at Renaissance festivals. So I remember one night being out to dinner and I actually looked around the table and I, and I, and I started counting and I said, all right, show of, we had like, we had like 15 people at the table. I said, show of hands. How many of you here eat fire? Eight of them raise their hand, <laughs> <laughs> right? I said, how many of you swallow swords? Three of them raised their hand. It was like, I have all these really bizarre people. But the best part about Renaissance festivals was really the fact that I was surrounded by comedians all the time. So we were constantly making each other laugh. We got to dinner and we would just be doing all the wrong things for the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's great. And I, I want to dive into that because I think that's a skill too that's interesting is when you you have a life that's, creative and fun and, and based around comedy, it's a skill like anything else. You start finding more funny things where people who are stressed out and grinding and filling their life with worry, they find more of that, right? Uh, so, right, I'm, right. I, well, can, let me throw just a, a little bit of science in here, right? Yeah. So we, we have a conscious moment, a, sub, a, a conscious mind, a subconscious mind, and then the future is just a place where we're setting goals. So, if you you know if you have you ever bought a car yeah okay did you choose what kind of car you wanted before you went to the store to buy it um i did once yes okay so once you made that choice did you start seeing that kind of car everywhere oh yeah absolutely all right 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 so the way it works is your conscious mind focuses on something your subconscious mind kicks in to help you achieve it it starts to show you things so like when you're surrounded by comedians right you're constantly looking for the funny thing and so funny things naturally show up in your life, right? So, you know, the idea of, of the, the, the guy kicking the door open because <laughs> he's in a straitjacket and making fart noises, you know, that was just the next funny thing that was going on. Because when you focus positive, you're going to get all kinds of positive things in your life. Because if you know negative people, and all of us know negative people, they always have something to be negative about because they're focused on the negative. But if you focus on the positive and you focus on being a playful human, and what happens is you get playful things coming into your life. It's cool. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm doing the podcast for sure is to force myself to meet other playful, fun humans and surround myself with, with people that are having fun. But I also wanted to ask you about kind of talent versus skill, because it seems to me that you have learned a lot of cool skills that people don't have, but I'm interested in how you see talent there because Nobody is born knowing how to spin a gun or or crack a whip, right? Those, those are learned skills. But there are things 
that are, are comedic or acting or, or maybe personality based, do you think any of it is a born talent or do you think all of it is, is skill I acquired? I, I, it's, a very, it's a great question because, and I've never had this question. It's something I have thought about. I think some people are born with less limitations. And because they're born with less limitations, they're able to do different things and, and other things, right? Some people are born into a family, say you have a family who, like for instance, my family, my parents, my grandparents went lived through the depression. And so my parents had a very big lack mentality. So their life was all about lack and that gets handed down, you know? So sometimes you're handed this, your, your Delta hand that says, we have these specific beliefs. And so you can break out of those beliefs anytime you want just by literally saying, okay, I'm changing what I'm thinking and start focusing on something else. Yeah. And the key is, you know, your, your, your past, your subconscious mind is filled with me memories of your present moments. And that's all it really is. And it's a subconscious belief built upon that. Your future is just a place where you set the goal for future present moments. So the reality of it is, if you want to have a playful, fun life, you got to do it now. You got to do it right here in this present moment, because as the more you do it here and the more you make successful, positive, playful moments, those subconscious mind is getting filled in with play, playful moments. And suddenly it goes, it, just like that car you saw, it yeah. starts kicking into, into experience and you start seeing more and more about playful things. Being surrounded by comedians, we all were seeing funny things all the time. So we, I've never laughed as much as the, when I did my Renaissance festivals. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. I think you nailed it. And you kind of brushed past what I thought was an interesting story. You said there was a moment in your life which gave you a, a some realization about your potential. Would you mind sharing that in as much detail as you feel comfortable? I don't want to I will share everything because I am that I am an open book and I think the story it's I think the story itself can help somebody else. So uh, I had this dream of being a stuntman, a fight director, and doing all those very physical career. And I was working my way to get my black belt. I was, you know, really getting very, very fit. I looked like a strong, muscular guy. At that time, I looked like Fabio. I actually had hair at that time, right? Looking great. Glorious. Buddy of mine says, hey, he says, hey, come on over to my house and help me unload my van. I said, okay. So I drove over to his house. He was a professional potter. He made beautiful pottery. That's another thing. When you work at Renaissance festivals, you have that, that kind of friend too. <laughs> and so I <laughs> climbed up in his van. And I picked up the first 80 pound box of clay that was in his van. And I turned to set it out of the van. Now, meanwhile, I'm thinking to myself, this is just another workout. So I'm thinking it like fit, hit, fit healthy, turned to set it outside of the van and my upper spine separated from my lower spine and I collapsed and became paralyzed. Whoa. And they took me to the hospital. The doctor says, John, you have a condition known as spina bifida occulta. I said, Gesundheit. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and I actually, actually did. And he laughed. He said, um, basically, what happened was three of my vertebrae never formed properly at birth. And with the extra 80 pounds, that twisting action basically unscrewed the top half of my spine and pinched off my spinal column, which paralyzed my legs. And wow. so I'm, I'm in the hospital and the doctor says, you will never have a physical career. You're going to live a sedentary life the rest of your life. You know, you're done, basically. And somebody came in, a buddy, a buddy of mine came in and he did something that on surface level looked like it could have been a very cruel joke. He gave me a book called The Tao of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee at a point where I just was told that I'll never do martial arts again. Right. And, yeah. But I, I'm reading that book. And as I'm reading that book, I start seeing this pattern of mental flexibility being like water, he would say. And so I started saying, OK, I'm just going to get very present in my present moment and I'm going to be really flexible. And what I did was I started just flexing my back muscles. And I, when I say flexibility, I mean mental flexibility, not muscular flexibility. So I just started flexing my back muscles. And so I started making present moments where I was just flexing my back muscles. I slowly started lowering down the back. And then it was about day 20. I was able to flex my hip muscles and the doctor couldn't believe it because he didn't think it was possible. By day 30, I was sitting on the edge of the bed and was able to get myself up to a seated position. By day, by wow. six months, I was walking great. 
by by the time at the end of a year, I was probably back to what you would consider normal, but not buff like I was. And at one year and six months, I stood on top of a three story tower and jumped off. Wow. <laughs> right. That and I went awesome. on and I went on to do over 4000 live comedy sword fighting stunt shows all over the world, including the front lines of Iraq and Afghanistan. Man, that is awesome. And I'm really glad I asked because you kind of skipped, uh, <laughs> skipped over the headline there. But that's amazing. Great story. And um, did you have to have uh, like back surgeries to fuse those together and fix it or what? It's so I'm glad you asked that. I I never had the surgery. They wanted to put pins in wow. to hold my back together. But I knew that if they put pins in my back, that would create a spot in the back that wouldn't flex, which means I couldn't do rolls or high falls. And I was going to be a stuntman. So I, I, I kept my goal. So what I started doing was yoga. And I started exercising my lower back muscles. And right now today, as we're sitting here talking, I still have the condition, but I have a really strong lower back, right? <laughs> right. My back <laughs> yeah. hold, holds it together. And I, like I said, I did over 4,000 uh, comedy sword fighting shows all over the world. And you know, I had a very physical career my entire life and, and, and would not have done it any differently. But the cool part about it was because I went through that, it literally let me know I could do anything. Right. Because I knew that I was now in control. I couldn't I could say the doctor wasn't right. And I just do what I want. And since then, I've been to 30 countries. I climbed Machu Picchu. I climbed Mount Sinai. I've been in the I swam in the in the River Jordan. I um, gosh, I oh God, so many things, so many things. There's just crazy stuff because I just started living my joy and my passion. And I started carrying it with me and saying, I want to do this. And now, OK, let's just go do it. And we just did for years. I love that because that's what I found about interviewing playful people like yourself is that they take that outside of work too. They do interesting things and they create, you know, stories that they, they want to tell and, and things mm -hmm. uh, to do that. But there was also another part that I could really relate with, which is um, for me, I found that those, those bottoms of our lives, the, those troughs and down points, are actually the part that makes you stronger and makes the rest of it possible because I've told my story way too many times. I've had a very cushy uh, existence, nothing really uh, as far as adversity. Uh, one small health issue and uh, the story I always tell is I was fired live on stage by Billy Idol's uh, manager <laughs> right. uh, opening up for him in front of thousands of people. Oh and my God. That happened though. I didn't take it personally. I got over it really pretty quick. It definitely sucked in the moment and was embarrassing to tell my bosses and, and people that that happened. But the next day, I just knew that that was a moment that just made me bulletproof. Like, okay, well, it can't get worse than that now. Right, right, right. right. I've done so many shows as a DJ. I got maced during shows. There's all kinds of, I did a show on 9 11, all that kind of stuff where it's like, well, if I can do a show, then I can do a show anytime. I, I'm not worried about, you know, a podcast going wrong or, or forgetting what I'm going to say. Like that's nothing compared to, to, to getting right. fired by a rock star or, or doing a right. show on 9-11, right? <laughs> right, right. I had a, you know, the USO shows. It's so funny. Uh, when you go, when you go over there as a, as a USO performer, they give you the rank of Colonel. So you're treated like, like a real rock star when you're on the road. And wow. They put us in these experiences and the first two tours, the first two tours we went on were in Europe because they were building up to go into Afghanistan. And the first the first tour was great because they were literally moving troops. So you get it, get to the base and the troops are sleeping in hallways because there's not enough beds. So, you know, and, and military audiences are always the most appreciative that you could possibly imagine. That's the great. second tour, they sent us to Europe again. But now all the soldiers were in the theater. And we were actually performing for people who were stationed in Europe. And when you're when you're traveling as an entertainer and you're traveling through Europe, people don't stay on the base for entertainment because they're in Europe. Right. So oh, we were having, good point. We were having shows where, where we get there and they didn't know we were coming, you know? <laughs> and you know, stuff like that. So I kept telling two. the guy, I said, I said, you need to send us further down range. You need to send us down where the soldiers need us, because that's where we need to go. And the third tour, I found myself standing on the flight line in Fallujah, <laughs> Iraq. And I'm telling a colonel, I said, I kept telling him to send us further down range. I finished the word range and a bomb blew up about a quarter mile to my left. And the colonel just looks over. He looks back at me, he says, son, 
you can't get further downrange, right? And yeah. you know, we had, we had all kinds of just crazy experiences like that. But yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because like you, you talk about those moments, those low moments in your life, moments like that where you're in a moment where you could be bombed or shot at or something like that seem to have a whole different perspective after you've been to such a low place, you know, you suddenly like we had a, we were during the war, there was a, the Shia attacked the Sunnis mosque in a town called Samara. And <laughs> we flew in. Now I'll tell you my biggest fear when I was in Iraq, we were dressed as Renaissance characters doing our shows over there. So my biggest fear was the chopper was going to go down and I was going to be walking through Iraqi city wearing tights. <laughs> you know, you know, that wouldn't have gone over well, I don't think. But so we landed. In I might have dressed on location when we got to the, 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 the tent. <laughs> we, yeah. we started doing we started doing that after this next incident <laughs> because oh, no. we flew in on two choppers. They dropped us off and all of our equipment was in the front chopper. There was four of us in the back chopper. They came out. They got all our stuff. We jumped out. The helicopters leave because if they're on the ground, they're a target. Right. So they're gone. So now they say to us, we're on a base that's pretty, pretty active. That's the way they described it. <laughs> right? yeah. And they said, there's no dining facility. You have to get your lunch at the truck over there. But you're, after you get your food, scatter so that we're not all together because that's a target. So we all went over, got our food. We looked around. We saw a Humvee. Went over, climbed in the Humvee and ate lunch. And finished that. Went over and did a full show whole time. And uh, funny part was I was wearing Charlie Daniels flak jacket because it was the only one that fit me because I'm that big. <laughs> right? And uh, so – we do the show. We pack up the whole show. We come back to the flight line. The helicopters come in and land. They throw our equipment in the front chopper. We climb in the back chopper, get all latched in. Choppers take off. The rocket-propelled grenade goes under the chopper I'm in and blows up the Humvee I had lunch in. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then we're the only helicopters in the air. So they said, okay, we're going to go find them. And we went hunting for them. So now... I'm in this helicopter and we're flying, we're circling the city of Samara. People are diving for cover and we're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we're like, we're, you know, we had no fear whatsoever because it was like, it was just not in our mind. You know, it was just insane. But uh, we sit back and laugh about it now. But, you know, that's it. It was a, that, that moment of having my back, that doctor tell me all my dreams are done. It made every other moment easier. Every other moment easier. Yeah, I, I think, gosh, I mean, those are, are great stories. It does make it the, the rest of your life uh, more interesting, I think, in comparison, because um, you kind of know where some of the edges are, right? And I'm hoping that people coming out of the pandemic this year and stuff really appreciate that as they come out and we can savor this for a little bit longer. I was, you know... Um, worried last summer when we have, you know, protests and elections and other stuff going on that, that were seem to uh, have all that pent up negative energy that I, I think there's also a pent up positive energy that I'm hoping we experience here in 2021, that people get out and, and really appreciate the group gatherings that they can have and the entertainment that they can see again, finally, and all of this uh, stuff. I'm hoping there's a renewed appreciation for that. That uh, We you know what it's, it's so interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm a, obviously a corporate speaker. I do a lot of speeches and I haven't done a lot this year because just like the Marvel blip, the speaking industry had a blip. Half the speakers went away and all the business. So <laughs> um, and now it's coming back. But the, what's what's really interesting over the past three weeks, I have been inundated with calls for speeches. So That's great. there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're coming out. People are getting very optimistic. They're getting very excited. I'm actually speaking for a cannabis company in the next few weeks in Michigan. So it's like everybody's coming back. Everyone's getting really excited. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I want to make sure everybody else hears that because some people can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there's a a quote that I like to quote sometimes. It's Mother Teresa, of all people. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> they asked her to go to, a, go to a, an anti-war rally and she declined. And she said, no, ha have a peace rally and I'll come. Right. Right. So what are you focused on? You know, you focus on the negative or you focus on the positive. You get focused on the positive, you're going to you're going to have a much better life, a much better experience. I had one last question for you and that is is there anything left on your fun bucket list? Anything On my fun bucket do? list. Well, I've done almost everything I've ever wanted to do in my life. I literally have. And the the one thing that is still kind of out there, 
I want I want to go to to Turkey, the, the country of Turkey. Mm-hmm. And there's a, just a whole bunch of sites. Uh, I, I I delved into the archaeology of all the sites I went to, and I really got fascinated by that. And there's so many sites in Turkey that I haven't seen yet. So that's the one thing that's really still left on that bucket list. After that, the the, the bucket list goes into moving back to the beach because that's where I was grew up, and I want to go back and, and where'd you grow up? Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Delaware, interesting. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, it, uh, I don't have any idea what the beach is like in Delaware. What's it? It's like? got the same climate zone as Georgia, as Atlanta, Georgia. So you, it has cold, cool winters, not cold. They have when they have snow, it's like a quarter inch, <laughs> right? And it's very rare. Mm-hmm. I live in Ohio now. We had twenty-two accumulating snow snowfalls this year, and we have some deep snow. So yeah, uh, yeah I'd much rather be back at the beach. But yeah, beautiful small beach town, and then when when September hits, all the tourists go away, and we get like a month and a half of real beach weather <laughs> without them. And then just before summer, we get the same thing. So it's really a great place to live, great place to grow up too. That is awesome. Do you want to play a game? Sure, I'll do whatever you want, dude. I'm all uh, about it. All right, we're sprint- spinning uh, our wheel of games. There are 10 games that could possibly land on, and you got... Survey says, survey says is very similar to a popular TV show uh, you might know. So I'll ask you a question. You just have to hit uh, one of our top answers. So name a household pet that you could leave by itself for a couple of days. Cat. Cat is the number one answer. Congratulations. (laughs) Nicely done. All right. Question number two. Name a type of food that gets stuck between your teeth. Corn. Corn is the number one answer. You need to uh, find a family and a feud. Uh, <laughs> name a gripe a dentist might have about one of his patients. Bad breath. Bad breath is the number one answer. You nailed it three in a row. Three for three. Yeah, Congratulations. Uh, I guess you Thank win you. a free 30-second uh, commercial for whatever is going on in your world. <laughs> what? How can we help you? Do you have any gives or asks for the audience? Well, actually, I'm going to give you I'm going to give your audience a a copy of my 5F workbook, which is the process I used to achieve everything in my life. And when I say free, I mean free. I they don't even have to give me an email address. It's just a link. They go there. They get it. Um, And the only thing I ask is that while you're on the while you're on my site anyway, just look around. If you like what you see, great. That's all I care about. But also on there, there's a daily vlog. I do a daily motivational video every day. So it's kind of redundant. So um, um, so check that out. And I'm, I have a podcast of my own called Interaction Hero, where we empower people to step out and you know awaken their own interaction heroes. Awesome. I, I love all of that. And thank you for winning the game and giving the prize. So we'll put the link in the show notes. CorporateActionHero.com is the website. But if you find the link in the show notes, you can get that free gift that John has given away for all of us. Uh, John, I appreciate it. Any other um, final words of wisdom, thoughts? You know, I have one I have one quote that I, I like to live. You know, Remember that your choices today are tomorrow's outcomes. And so live that moment. Choose to be funny. Choose to laugh. Choose to play today, and tomorrow will be playful. I love it. John, you nailed it. Thank you so much for being on the show again. You want to find John, it's corporateactionhero.com. He uh, does swords, whips, guns, stunts, comedy, all types of good uh, content, entertaining shows, and uh, educational information for your next corporate event. If you would like to learn more about Playful Humans, go to playfulhumans.com. You can join the community of other playful adults looking to rediscover the power of play. And there's a quiz on there just for fun, too. So check out the Playfulness Quiz. We'll see you next time. Don't wait for tomorrow. Go play, everybody.